right. Hopefully, hopefully everybody can hear us and see us and we have the presentation in the webinar as well. So welcome everybody to this webinar about Brussels Airlines. Um, it's a bit of a funny situation. We have a picture of an airplane here and we are sitting in boiling hot environments. So Karina and I had a quick chat about how warm it is actually. I'm located in, in Dresden in Germany and it's 35 degrees outside. I have roughly 29 in here in the meantime. So it feels a bit like vacation, but we are actually working. Um, but Nevertheless, we will have the pleasure to spend one hour together with you talking about what amazing things Karina and her team did at Brussels Airlines. Um, and we have kind of uh, a good uh, transition to this slide. Your crew for today, as we're talking about an airline, uh, is myself as the host. My name is Sebastian. I'm working at Staffbase in a team called Strategic Advisory. We're doing strategic consultancy for our customers, talking about digital workplace strategies, intranet strategies, communication strategies. I had the pleasure to introduce Staffbase, my own, uh, at my previous station as a customer of Staffbase to a global Fortune 500 company, as an employee app and as an intranet. and. Uh, Three and a half years ago, I decided to switch sides and help other companies achieving the same. And at my side, we have our famous Karina. And maybe Karina, you can use the chance to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello from Brussels. I'm based in Brussels and I am a digital channels officer at Brussels Airlines. Uh, I work mainly in internal um, communication and I work with digital tools uh, for internal communication, in, including intranet. And yeah, today we will talk about our intranet and how we uh, introduce stuff base um, to our communication strategy. Perfect. Thank you so much. So to don't waste any time because Karina has a lot to tell, um, we have prepared a short and sweet agenda for you, which is basically um, already running with the introduction part. We will have a look on how it was possible for Brussels Airlines to reach people who are always on the move because we're talking about a company dealing with airplanes on the ground and up in the air. So this is definitely challenging. Um, as there were some problems with communication beforehand, otherwise you wouldn't have changed anything, Karina, right? Um, we will also talk about how comms worked out before um, we came into place. Um, we will also have a look on how Karina and her team managed to get everybody involved, to get everybody on board. And we will also have a look into what changed in terms of culture inside of the company, what was the impact for the internal communication department. And we will also have some time at the end to go through your questions. If there are questions from you as the audience, you have a Q&A feature within, those, uh, within this webinar software where you can put in your questions. I will see them. Um, I will also uh, let Karina know about the incoming questions uh, if we have time for that. Otherwise, if there are questions that are not answered within this webinar, we will get back to you via email. So please feel free to put in as many questions uh, that are popping up in your mind as possible, and all of them will be answered. So that's it for the agenda. Does this work for you, Karina? Yes, for sure, for sure. Let's oh. let's start. Then maybe uh, let's extend the introduction a bit. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about Brussels Airlines. Yeah, so um, Brussels Airlines is a Belgian national carrier. We are part of Lufthansa Group, and uh, we fly to uh, more than eighty-five destinations, um, including. Uh, 70 locations in 17 locations in sub-Saharan Africa and uh, I belong to the corporate communications team we are five people so um, uh, head of com, uh, comms team um, two spokespersons who are working on external communication and two internal comms uh, managers me including and um, yeah, as I said, I focus on the digital side of the internal communication and my colleague is uh, focusing on the content. So we are a relatively small team and uh, our company is, uh, yeah, we have uh, 
uh, slightly more slightly more than 3300 employees and it's a very diverse audience so we have different communities uh, as you can imagine we have uh, pilots we have attendants flight attendants we have airport staff we have engineers and um, technicians um, that do maintenance of the aircraft um, so um, we are very diverse and we have uh, this communities in different locations and uh, the largest uh, population in our company is the flight attendance community they are 43 percent of the workforce of uh, yeah uh, almost half of the company office staff represents only 10 percent of the company and um, pilots are around 12 uh, 12 percent sorry 20 percent and uh, around 10 percent of airport staff. So as you can see, the 75%, the majority of our company um, um, is represented by the non-desk workers. So they are always on the move. They are either on a plane or at the airport, uh, for example, passenger uh, service agents, or they are in the hangar doing maintenance. So it is a um, yeah, very diverse, very uh, rich population, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So 75% of non-desk workers is indeed a very high number. And I can imagine it's not that easy to reach such a diverse workforce. Um, and before we dig into how you actually utilize Staffbase to reach them, um, how has your internal comms worked out before this project has happened? Uh, well, that's a good question. It was a time of disconnection. Uh, we used to have um, three uh, communication channels. Uh, that was SharePoint, Yammer, and we had newsletters, regular newsletters. But um, I would say that they were not ideal uh, instruments for internal communication. For example, our SharePoint SharePoint was not uh, user friendly. It has it had a very uh, difficult structure and navigation because it was uh, created uh, by different teams uh, within the company, and the content was not optimized for mobile use. So for frontliners, it was really difficult to reach the content that they needed. Um, yeah, the same uh, with Yammer. It was a nice platform for employee interaction. But on the other hand, uh, when we wanted to communicate some messages, uh, they were not targeted at different uh, communities. So it was just one uh, constant stream of messages. And these messages were lost in the stream. And uh, people really didn't know where to find this information. And this led to the to disinterest to the contents. Um, and we had newsletters and there was uh, an option of targeting, uh, rather limited one, um, but it's used to work, but to a certain extent. So as you can see, um, it was, uh, we, we, yeah, our um, newsletter uh, was read only by half of the company and um, uh, the click uh, rate, uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah, Click rate was 25%, meaning that when someone, uh, when user received an, um, a summary, a newsletter with um, a summary of uh, latest news, in order to read this uh, news, you, you had to click on the button and only 25% uh, did that. So that was really low readership, very limited targeting option, uh, options. Um, um, it was really difficult to reach mobile workforce because uh, that was not user friendly. They had to either uh, open Outlook on their mobile phone, which was not ideal. Um, either, yeah, and if they wanted to use SharePoint, they had to zoom in into the pages to find the content. So that was we definitely needed something else. And also this variety of channels was also confusing because um, they were, um, yeah, our employees, they were lost. They didn't know where to go to find mm -hmm. uh, the piece of, of information that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so it was clear that first uh, our communities are very disconnected. Um, also, they don't have a clear and user-friendly channel of communication. and um, also, after the COVID, I think we used to have a physical space where people used to see each other. 
uh, the crew room at Brussels airport. It, this was the place where pilots and flight attendants and airport staff could see each other and talk to each other uh, and office staff as well. But uh, during COVID times, uh, this space was closed. So these communities have become even more disconnected. So mm -hmm. we needed something, um, some platform to unite and to connect. Okay. What is kind of special from my point of view, if I'm talking to other companies um, utilizing Microsoft products like SharePoint and Yammer, and they have a similar high amount of non-desk workers, they typically don't have Microsoft licenses for everybody. But this is a special situation for Brussels because you have them, right? Yes, that's the case. Uh, everyone has access to Teams and to SharePoint and to Outlook. Um, I cannot tell why exactly uh, this is um, the way it is, um, but I, I know that we wanted to also make use of it somehow because uh, we wanted to integrate all those different uh, channels, parts of uh, content with each other. So that yeah. was also an idea. Yeah, so it's interesting to see even even with a fully licensed organization on Microsoft, it's sometimes hard to get things moving because especially if we're talking about internal comms, we're not talking about productivity. We're talking about creating culture. We also have this in the title of this webinar to create this culture of belonging. And if this is going to happen on the SharePoint, which is not mobile op optimized for 75% of people who are working on mobile devices. This is kind of a hard job for comms to actually achieve. So my, my question would be, how did you start the actual change then? So what was the first step? Well, uh, I should say that I was not there at the time. I only joined the company two years ago and uh, one year into having stuff base app. So I, um, but I interviewed my colleagues, so I can tell you a little bit about that. So um, the, <laughs> the benchmarking has been done between uh, three apps. Uh, our CEO at the time, Peter Gerber, um, used to work in Lufthansa Cargo and there they already been using staff based solution and he was very much impressed. He, uh, had the app. He tried it. He, he tried navigating the app thems himself. He used to the, to, to using the app and he was, um, um, a big advocate for staff based solution. So that was already um, something that uh, we were thinking about. And we uh, also compared this uh, staff based solution with two, um, um, two apps. Uh, and we wanted to, um, to switch to an app because we thought that that might be the, the ideal, um, yeah. The, the, the ideal channel of communication, because this is how people communicate now. And we know that uh, mobile gadgets are very much used. And for our pilots and flight attendants, that would be um, something that will be easy and user friendly. So that was the, uh, the plan. And we uh, compared uh, um, staff base with two other um, apps. These apps are native apps so one of the of Lufthansa group and one of Eurowings and even though these apps were um, quite nice and quite nicely uh, designed uh, and they were branded uh, they didn't match our needs because first we wanted to have a single sign-on uh, option because we know that uh, if we ask our employees to uh, create a, a separate password and separate login they this will immediately drive them uh, away from the app. They will not be using it, but they will be, yeah, uh, they will not bother remembering uh, the credentials. So uh, that was the first, um, um, yeah, requirement. Uh, these apps also didn't allow for user generated content. And that was also um, um, a drawback because we wanted to connect our communities to make them interact with each other. And, um, yeah, we also didn't, um, yeah, the, 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 another problem was that they didn't have multi-channel approach. So there's no option of targeting content. So if you would, um, yeah, select this app, we will once again face the problem of uh, having one stream of messages, irrelevant content and disinterest from their communities. 
So um, in the stuff-based solution, actually that was the case. Uh, there was a multi-channel approach that was really um, a huge, um, yeah, a strong uh, uh, argument for. Uh, we also saw that, um, yeah, that um, stuff-based provides not only mobile app, but also desktop solution, and also different add-ons and integrations, and uh, Microsoft 365 integrations as well. And since we already have licenses uh, for every user in the company, we thought that might uh, work for us. Yeah, and also we like the user friendliness of the interface and uh, the, that the app can be branded according to our uh, branding guidelines. Uh, so all of that, um, yeah, I spoke in favor of stuff-based app. Yeah, very cool. So looking at the Lufthansa group in, in total with more than 100,000 employees, um, it, it's probably quite good to have a really good working example in, in this own group of companies that you can, can use um, and this probably also help the decision a bit. Um, but how did the, the actual start then from the, from the project look like? So what did the team do to bring this on board to have every crew member inside of this app? Well, I know that um, it took only three months to build the app. I know that my colleagues worked closely with StuffBase. Uh, they had regular meetings with the StuffBase team. And uh, one of the ideas, uh, the strategic idea, was that we want to prioritize department-specific content uh, so that uh, every user who joins the, the app already has a view uh, tailor-made for, for this person. So uh, he or she has um, a certain landing page and sees a certain channel. So that was um, the idea that was driving um, the driving idea of the project. And um, I know that, um, yeah, the, 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 the whole implementation process uh, was rather quick and easy. And when I asked my colleague Ilse, how was that? She said it was really, really, really smooth. And um, they, they could uh, prepare everything in advance. They populated, they created the channels for every community. Uh, they created uh, pages for every community and uh, they populated it with the content. Um, yeah, and also uh, before launching the, uh, the app, um, um, I know that my colleagues, they um, set up a group of content owners. So every department uh, had it its own content champion and they organized uh, online trainings on how to use the app, uh, how to publish um, posts or how to edit pages. Uh, so they prepared them to, uh, um, yeah, to start using the app. And um, my colleagues also prepared a ton of voice guidelines uh, for the content owners so that they know how to um, interact with, um, with our employees. Um, they also set up um, a, an image bank uh, that, uh, yeah, with images that were license free and uh, everyone could use it uh, free, use them freely. Um, and they also, for end users, they also prepared uh, um, a short manual guide on how to use um, how to use stuff-based app. So um, I think uh, three months is a very short time to prepare a, a whole new uh, communication channel. But I I I know that it was um, yeah, it was uh, very efficient from both sides. Yeah, yeah, three months is definitely impressive for such a project, <clears throat> especially if you're looking at the success rate. So 90% of adoption in the first months is amazing. And this is also what, what we see if we're looking at other solutions. If we're looking at Microsoft, for example, it's, it's way harder to get such a solution working, especially with non-desk workers. There are other solutions out there that work perfectly well, like we, we have seen a lot of successful workplace um, installations, for example, a tool which is now facing a sunset. Um, that's also why uh, 
a lot of companies are looking into staff base now because this this easiness to use and this familiarity from tools like Facebook that is coming with a tool like Workplace or staff base. This is something that is really, really helping. And what I really like here is that you have this, this image of um, the launch material and it says Sherlock is born. Why have you decided to name the app Sherlock? Oh, yes, I, I should explain that. Uh, so we used to have SharePoint and we still have SharePoint and it was named Watson. So Watson, both as a fictional character from the detective novels, but also as what's on, what is happening. Um, and it was very logical, I think, f to uh, name uh, the new app Sherlock so that we ho have a pair. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the, the, the new app was called Sherlock and um, our colleagues know it uh, as Sherlock and not as stuff base. Um, yeah, and in order to um, yeah, to make everyone aware that the new app is is uh, is coming. Um, my colleagues they um, created. Um, well, I, I should I should explain here as well. So in Belgium there is a tradition uh, to uh, to give out candies and postcards uh, um, introducing the child that was born. So um, following this tradition, uh, my colleagues they um, set up uh, bags with candies uh, saying Sherlock and um, they distributed these bags um, in the office and also in the break rooms and our different locations. And there was a postcard saying Sherlock is born, uh, like Sherlock was a baby. And, um, and it also said that uh, from now on, please uh, use this app uh, to learn about company news um, and uh, all internal um, communication emails will be replaced by this app. So everyone knew that no news uh, yeah, in, the, in their inbox anymore. So they have to actually go um, to Sherlock. And there was a QR code. Um, and uh, this QR code led to uh, an app store. And um, yeah, our users could download it right away. And just uh, using their uh, regular uh, password and login and password that they used to open their computer or tablet, they just uh, logged in. So this whole process of registration, registration was very smooth. And I think that uh, just in a few months, indeed, we have a very, very, we had a very, very high adoption rate. Um, yeah. And uh, I see that you opened the new slide with a, um, uh, yeah, with the navigation panel. So indeed, um, the navigation is very simple in the app, and that was also um, a huge, um, yeah, factor in adoption because uh, they could easily find their way in the app. They didn't have to uh, join some group or um, register somewhere. They they could just open the app and all the information that is uh, relevant for their team, for their department was already there. Yeah, very cool. I, I absolutely love this, this connection between having SharePoint named Watson and then putting something beside it or in front of it uh, called Sherlock. So this is already quite lovely. And then this uh, also this story with those candy bags that everybody received um, in combination with a app that is completely branded, as, as you can see on the slide. Um, so this is also from my experience, having done such a similar project before, this is an absolute game changer, having an application that is coming from your organization, actually. So no Brussels airline employee knows that this is staff base because staff base isn't mentioned anywhere. And this is also creating this kind of trust. Hey, this is something coming from my employer. There is Brussels Airlines as the developer of this application. It's completely branded. It's solely Brussels Airlines content. Talking about okay. Sherlock, in, in the beginning, we we also had a quick look into how your comms landscape looked before. And you said already you still have Watson, so the SharePoint available. So how does Sherlock, the Sherlock platform then fits into this overall digital workplace and communication uh, landscape that you have nowadays? How does this now look like? Well, um, so now, um... Yeah, our landscape 
Uh, so we have three spaces now. So we have Sherlock, um, we have SharePoint still, um, and we have Teams. So Sherlock is a news app. So it's a, it's an app for fast communication, for, for news, for, uh, fast messages, let's say. And SharePoint is rather a, a place for long communication, for uh, manuals and documents uh, that are stored long term. Um, and we also have teams for um, meetings, uh, for chats, for uh, project uh, collaboration. Um, and the difference between, uh, let's say, uh, SharePoint and Teams is that uh, the, it's not that open. I mean, the environment uh, has different permissions. Uh, and for every user, the permissions um, the permissions are different, and I would say it's rather um, restricted environment uh, because, yeah, we have confidential content items um, uh, both on Teams, on SharePoint, and Sherlock is like a place uh, for open communication. It is more open. It is more transparent. It is a place where everyone can convene and uh, share um posts and um, discuss things. So I think that Sherlock is, um, yeah, is, a, is, is an open place, let's say, in our environment. Yeah, cool. And I, I missed one thing that you've shown beforehand. So beforehand, you also had Yammer or now Weba Engage as one platform. Is this still existing? Is this somehow incorporated or what happened with Yammer then? No, once we started with a staff based app, we shut down Yammer um, and we, yeah, we don't use it anymore. Okay. So basically the whole use case behind that with all these social walls went into this, this front door layer, which is the central entry point for your organization then. And you're utilizing also then the Sherlock app to create those kind of communities, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And talking about um, creating communities, we, we have um, building a culture of belonging as a title for this webinar. So if we're talking about communities, maybe let's focus on that for a moment. How does this whole aspect of culture fit into such a rather technical picture? Well, first of all, uh, we have provided one uh, single platform for everyone. Uh, so, um, well, on SharePoint, you cannot interact much. Uh, and here, um, this is the case. People can interact. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's just a platform that has become a common space where everyone can, can learn about everyone's, um, yeah, news. And, uh, it was also our deci decision from the start that we, uh, enable comments under every post. So every channel has uh, comments enabled. Um, and uh, yeah, the, that creates, I think, the culture of, of feedback. So every corporate news post can be commented. Uh, we see the reactions. We see sometimes maybe a little bit critical comments and reactions. Sometimes it's um, yeah uh, very positive, but um, that was our conscious decision to be transparent and to foster this culture of dialogue. And um, yeah, also the social wall, maybe one of the uh, favorite features of our colleagues um, in the app. It is a place um, where people can share basically a any everything that they uh, think that uh, might be interesting to th their colleagues. And um, Social Wall has become this place where people really can learn about each other's um, lives and also see, like, have a look uh, into each other's, um, yeah, working fields. Because we are located in different uh, yeah, all over the world. We have outstations, for example, in Africa, 
And sometimes it feels really that we are too far away from each other, but on social world, people share uh, and they people really like to share. That is also something that we discovered that once we had this, um, this platform and the interface is also very easy, it is very easy to share something. You just uh, hit the button, share the post, and you just uh, type it like on Facebook or other social media. And people started sharing and um, this is this has become uh, a uniting, uh, let's say, platform, the uniting moment for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where we saw people connecting. And here you can see two um, screenshots um, for it's just an example. So here you can see this nice koala. And this guy was transferred from Edinburgh uh, to Brussels and our colleagues in cargo in cargo team, they shared this picture, and um, yeah, they made sure that um, that this guy traveled uh, comfortably uh, on uh, in the aircraft. Um, so yeah, sometimes we just uh, have a tiny look into the uh, how you say it behind the screens of uh, diff of the life of different departments of different teams, and here's a uh, it's a post, uh, it's a congratulations post uh, to. Um, for a colleague, a female captain who is uh, having 30 years of seniority. So again, um, we know people, we learn about people, we, we connect, uh, we see each other, we see each other's uh, successes on the social wall. And um, yeah, this is how we learn. Um, and this is how we know about uh, what is happening. Yeah. My heart was melting the first time I have seen the screenshot of this koala. So this little fella attached to this to this stick, uh, it's just too lovely. Um, but having such a kind of post on, on the social wall, people sharing such a cool story that everybody loves to see. And I can imagine you have tons of likes on such a post and also tons of comments because people really like to see those inside stories, those behind the scenes stories. Um, what, what's the actual impact on your organization then offering such a kind of way to share insights on what's going on? Yeah, well, I think there are three uh, core aspects here. Uh, as you can uh, see on the slide, it's boosting sense of togetherness uh, because people share what happened to them for example, during their flight, like here, um, a, a flight attendant shared a postcard that was uh, signed by a passenger flying from Entebbe to Brussels. And it's saying, um, thank you very much for your support, for your kind attention. It, it made my day. And um, yeah, the, the, the flight attendant just wanted to share it. And this is how people learn from each other. And sometimes they feel proud being being um, part of the, of the team of the bigger team where um, yeah where everyone is trying to go extra mile to um, yeah to make our passengers happy for example um, and here you can see a picture a picture of uh, our crew um, was it uh, Accra, I think it was a Belgian Belgian national day and the airport team um, 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 presented uh, a cake in the colors of Belgian flag uh, to cheer up our team. So, yeah, I think uh, this is how we connect to each other. We see uh, we see the stories of our frontliners. We will not see them otherwise because uh, we yeah we are too disconnected uh, physically. Um, but this is what it creates the, when, when people share their stories. And also, I think Social Wall and uh, Sherlock has become also a, um, a support platform. So when people don't know where to find something or they lost something, uh, they uh, use Social Wall to help each other out. And uh, for example, here, I think uh, it is a picture of a teddy bear that was uh, left by our um, one of uh, our passengers, uh, of our young passengers, in the lounge in the airport, and our lounge staff found it. Then they uh, collaborated with the crews to be able to actually fly it to the place where this boy lives, and they also wrapped it, in, wrapped the bear in the um, in the 
blanket uh, with Smurfs. Uh, so uh, they added some Belgian touch to it. Uh, and that's also how people collaborate in our team. And they share this uh, on the social wall. And yeah, I think that cases like this, they, um, they make people uh, proud sometimes, sometimes just make people smile because it's something that, yeah, that our crews do and they, um, yeah, they do, they're doing their best. Yeah. And, um, maybe to, uh, talk about the last, uh, screenshot, it's, um, um, sometimes of course, of course we have, a, it's not always uh, rainbows and, and roses. Sometimes people, of course, being very, very critical and negative. And um, when in the periods of social uh, tensions or, um, so we had a period of social unrest where one of our communities, pilot community um, wanted to go on strike and they posted an open letter on the social wall explaining that they are going to uh, go on strike. And um, other communities started to, um, to, 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 to engage in, in the, in a dialogue because um, they provided their, um, they, they wanted to share their uh, opinion on that because once uh, one community goes on strikes on strike, all other communities are impacted and um, they, um, for example, ground community shared another open letter where they asked pilots, um, would, do you, are, are you sure that you want to, to, to go on strike? Because these are the cons consequences that we will face. And these are the conflict consequences for the company. So uh, we didn't interf inter interfere in, in, in this discussion. But I think that when different communities shared their opinions um, on the platform, I think that pilot community, they also get an idea uh, what the life for other communities is. And they, in the end, decided not to strike. And I think that, um, yeah, this whole debate, the whole discussion, uh, in the end, it, it led to uh, more empathy because they realized what it is what it means for other communities and other mm -hmm. communities also now understand more about the challenges that pilot face pilots face so that's that's also sometimes it's not easy sometimes it's a very um uh let's say very heated discussions going on on the social wall but um we of course following them closely we um we try to keep everyone in um to, to make everyone be respectful. And normally it is the case. Um, we never, it is very rarely when someone is disrespectful uh, on, on social wall. Also maybe because it's not anonymous, everyone is, um, yeah, is named and uh, is known. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's a, it's an interesting tool. We are still um, dealing with it. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, unpredictable, but in a good way, because, um, most of the time it's, uh, it helps us understand what, what are the emotions running in the company. Hmm. And isn't, isn't that amazing to see, because you said it's, it's a tool, right? It's a social wall. It's just a possibility for your employees to communicate with each other. And what is happening is actually impact and value for the whole organization because if we are talking about a strike situations where the different communities the different areas and departments in the organization start to talk to each other and to figure out how to move on together so that nobody gets hurt and still everybody achieves what they want to achieve this is creating actual impact without the company interfering. And also this, this teddy bear story, it's also heart melting. If, if I imagine receiving such a package as a, a parent, um, if my child has lost a teddy bear, this is also creating impact for the company because this is customer satisfaction. I, I can imagine that those parents posted it immediately on social media said, how cool are they? What an effort they put into getting this teddy bear back to my child. This is just, amazing what can happen with just a tool Indeed. and we're talking about impact for the whole organization but you're 
talking um, about also the, the comms department, you're representing the comms department of Brussels Airlines. So what, what is the impact on your department then? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, it is very multi, multi-layered. Uh, first of all, we have uh, different formats to work with now. So as an internal comms team, we can share uh, our stories in a very different um, uh, formats. So for example, we use uh, podcast formats uh, for um, positioning our CEO because she joined um, after previous CEO um, has been working in the company for a really short period of time. And we were thinking, how can we um, position her in the way that everyone uh, knows her, learns about her, uh, and um, that it's not too formal, that, um, yeah, that maybe it, it, it becomes more personal in a way. So uh, we ask her to record um, a message every two weeks for our employees and uh, just talk about uh, her life, her professional life, uh, about her recent meetings, uh, some developments. And that was a huge success. Um, even though people didn't know uh, her from the start, it was like a bridge between, um, yeah, between her and the audience. Um, yeah, and we also um, have different communities. So here you can see a picture of um, uh, made on the Antwerp Pride. Um, so we have LGBTQ plus community, we have female leadership community, uh, we have a young professionals community um, in uh, in our intranet on, on Sherlock. And that is also um, a connecting moment. So people unite. Uh, uh, and they um, live these communities. They have life of their own. Uh, they sometimes um, um, meet meet up uh, offline. They organize different uh, events. So uh, again, Sherlock is a platform where people um, connect, people meet each other, and people from across the company, from different departments, uh, yeah, know each other, learn each other about each other, and um, yeah. That is interesting, and we don't have to, uh, as internal comms um, managers, we don't have to interfere again because it's something that is happening quite naturally. Um, yeah, we also used to have town halls. Uh, was also like a uniting moment for the company, uh, but the problem is that it is normally in the headquarter of Brussels Airlines, and not everyone can join, of course, <clears throat> because people fly, because people are on the move. <clears throat> so with um, introduction of Sherlock, we started doing live streams, video live streams, and that. Um, yeah, that uh, that was a game changer because people could join the live stream. If they're busy, they can join it. Uh, they can watch the recording later. And this is also the way to inform uh, our staff about important topics. And um, yeah, we also, for example, for our outstations, we uh, do uh, separate live streams. I mean, the same live stream, but in a, a low lower quality so that they uh, don't have issues with downloading um, the, the the recordings so even people in the outstations they still can um yeah join the town halls and that was not the case before um yeah and we um, we also use ai support as you can see um uh, it is a feature that is uh, built in uh in the back end and because it's not only us who share the content. We have a lot of content owners, content champions, and sometimes not all of them are uh, are good communicators. Let's say they don't have writing skills, and uh, sometimes they need to uh, proofread uh, their texts. Uh, and AI also changed this uh, really, really drastically. We don't have to do uh, this work anymore. We don't have to proofread. Uh, we don't. Um, we just explain how to use AI. You just uh, click on the magic wand and your title uh, becomes more uh, catchy and interesting. Of course, you have to be um, critical with, in, with the AI. You have to be very 
um, yeah, attentive to what uh, you're posting. Of course, you have to um, adapt it to your own needs, but that really helps for, for people who have, for example, a, a list of bullet points to communicate. They can create a whole um, communication, a whole post about it uh, without our help. That really helps us because, uh, yeah, that saves time, that uh, makes people more independent content um, managers, content owners. Um, so yeah, that that helps. Yeah, cool. So so basically, you're combining the best a tool can give you in terms of possibilities from uh, doing live streams, doing uh, AI support for not that experienced writers, um, together with what is happening by employees utilizing these tools, and you have kind of best of breed approach there because the things that you're posting that you as the, the comms department have to post, you have to inform your employees, gets also uh, a higher reach if there's things around this that creates this kind of engagement, this kind of interest in what's happening, what's going on. So you have basically a mixture of engaging content and the content you have to communicate, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, since Again, uh, every community, once they open the app, first they see the team-related community and only then corporate news. It also makes sense for them because they know they will not have to look for the relevant content in the stream of irrelevant uh, yeah, news. Yeah. And I know that you have prepared one concrete example of one campaign that was going on, one internal campaign about the new uniforms, which is also kind of, this is not a very, very engaging topic. I can imagine that people are looking forward to how do I need to look like in the future, but it's still a classic communication campaign. And you uh, brought one slide to explain how this went, right? Yes. Um, yeah, you can see it here. So indeed, uh, in the beginning of this year, we wanted to introduce a new uniform. And this new uniform was centered around the topic of uh, sustainability. It, it is more sustainable and diversity because um, every airline has um, its uh, guidelines, um, style guides on um, what uh, flight attendants or pilots can wear and what they cannot wear. Uh, they are very, very detailed. And uh, for us, it was the first uh, style guide where um, female and male pilots and flight attendants would have um, the same the same style guide. So um, that, mean, that means that pilots can wear makeup, for example, very neutral, but still, uh, I, I mean, male pilots, of course, um, and, and, and vice versa. So, um, so it was centered about inclusivity, uh, diversity, and sustainability as well. And we started um, the teasing campaign with uh, videos. Uh, we shared videos um that hinted uh on some aspects of the new uniform but uh, no one saw it um no one knew what it what it is like and um before the the actual launch we um we launched the uniform guessing game so uh you can see a picture of cactus here so it was like um uh, how you call it, um, like a quiz calendar, uh, like a calendar that you would normally um, uh, have on Christmas with different tiles that you open each day. And these tiles, uh, uh, under each tile, there was a picture. Uh, and this picture uh, was a hint uh, and it was somehow related to the new uniform. So our staff, we asked them to try to guess how this picture relates to the new uniform. And of course, there was a lot of excitement uh, in the community. Everyone was really excited what is coming, what will be the color of the uni new uniform, what does Cactus uh, has uh, to do with the uniform. Um, so the Cactus, actually, we used uh, Cactus leather for, for the shoes uh, in our new uniform. Um, so that was one of the formats uh, on, um, yeah, on building on awareness and also building on the desire for the new uniform. 
uh, we also um, together with our marketing we we decided to um, present the new uniform uh, in the format of a fashion show so we organized a real fashion show um, and we um, organized the live stream of this fashion show uh, on Sherlock so before the actual event, we put the banners uh, on every landing page. So you can see it on top of the page now. Um, now. And uh, so everyone knew that uh, the launch is coming. Everyone was excited about it. And during the uh, fashion show itself, there was a small button to join the live stream and they could watch the live stream right on Sherlock. And so that was really important for our pilots and flight attendants that were not in Brussels at the time. They couldn't join the actual physical event, but they were still very excited about the uniform. And uh, for um, for our staff, when they uh, started wearing the new uniform, they wanted sometimes they wanted to swap some items so for example you can wear a dress but uh, you prefer trousers and um, for our uniform team there was the, there was a lot of work uh, to actually process every request so what we did we just opened uh, a swap forum where different um, yeah where our people they were just uh, posting their um, yeah uh, their post saying okay I have trousers in size XS, uh, I would love to swap it for uh, a skirt, for example. And that, that was very efficient and uh, that was also very good for our uniform team because they didn't have to handle that. Um, yeah, because it's different for 3,000 uh, people to, uh, yeah, to accommodate every request. Um, yeah, and after, after the switch to the new uniform, uh, our uh, different teams outside Belgium without our, even us uh, asking them to do that. They started sharing uh, the pictures of their teams on the social wall in the new uniform. And um, that was also something that we didn't expect, but it was really great to see that um, we are all wearing one uniform, even though we are very different, we are in different um, places of the world, uh, but everyone is wearing the same uniform. Um, yeah, so I think, again, it is um, something that helps you to have a, a look uh, at the life of different communities and also feel that you belong to this community. Very cool example, indeed. Um, as we're approaching the full hour um, and we have plenty of questions waiting to be answered by you, um, I, I would say maybe you can sum up the, um, the journey that you went through and the main free learnings that you gathered throughout the whole project phase. And then we can go into the questions that are waiting. Yes, sure. Um... I think one of the learnings is that having a transparency and having um, comments and um, yeah active uh, for under every every communication that we share that really contributes to having more empathy, more understanding, and uh, having feeling connection to other uh, to others. Uh, it was a risky uh, adventure from the start because we didn't know what comments will be coming in. But now we see that indeed, it uh, even though it, it may be scary <laughs> at the start, it's actually it, it, it helps because we we can discuss things and we can find common grounds. Um, that is much better than just staying. Um, disconnected not knowing uh, what people think about this or that so that really helps us as uh, as the internal communications team um yeah we of course have to moderate um comments we have to um keep an eye on what is happening of course it's our work and we do it every day but i think that um because we are a small company not that uh, big it's not that um uh, it's not a lot of work for us first uh, firstly and secondly i think uh, 
sometimes if the comments are disrespectful or rude we just reach out to this person and we say hey this is not how we communicate with each other you can say the same thing but uh, in a respectful manner and normally people agree and sometimes they apologize they really apologize and this also somehow connects us more uh, because uh, people become emotional but that when this emotional phase uh, goes out they feel that they are still working with these people they still have to um, collaborate and um, yeah i think i think having this um, um, yeah uh, space for for discussions is really is really precious and of course having uh, not only internal communications team to be sharing content but to have uh, independent content owners um, no, that know all the specifics uh, yeah that know that know that know what's happening in this community uh, this really contributes to this um, yeah in, engagement and interaction in the communities because of course we are as a internal comms team we cannot see everything what is happening and when we have this uh, content champions all over the company um, that helps to yeah to 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 um, make co content diverse and to feel the the for communities to feel that they are yeah, that they are seen, that there is a person who knows what their what their challenges are, and that um, shares content with them. All right. Thank you so much, Karina, for all those deep insights, for all the preparation, for also all the actual screenshots you shared. This is also something very worthy and uh, very precious for a lot of companies to see how this actually looks like for other companies. Um, we have a couple of minutes left um, and we have tons of questions. Um, so we, will, we won't be able to answer all of them, um, but I will do my best to sum up at least the sum of them because we have a lot of questions also around um, Social walls. Who is going? Who is able to see what? So, are those social walls uh, visible for all employees or only for specific departments? And we also have quite some questions around how do you moderate this actually? So, you said you have to moderate this, so you're having an eye on that. But there was, for example, a question around: Do you have uh, criteria or guidelines when you might need to interfere actually with something that is going on that tends to be a bit more critical or something like that? And the second question uh, bound to that is, are you deciding who, uh, which post is going to be published or is everything published as soon as the user hits send? Mm -hmm. um, let's start from the last question. It's um, user who decides. We don't have any pre-moderation. Um, about the social wall, yes, social wall is visible to everyone in the company and everyone can post on it. So it is a, a truly open open forum in the company. And how do we moderate? Are there any guidelines? I would say it's pretty simple. Not sure if it's me, but I can't hear um, you anymore. Ah, now you're, now you're back. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, sometimes people are being disrespectful, but that's re very rarely. Uh, most of the times they just ask questions. Sometimes something that uh, they don't understand. And then we reach out to, uh, uh, let's say, topic owner and ask him or her to give, to provide a little bit of uh, context um, and uh, yeah. Um, answer their questions but uh, we don't have any uh, written guidelines we just um, yeah we just uh, interfere if it's if we see that it's it is respectful all right thank you and as we're in the last minute maybe one one question which I was would be also interested in what is the adoption now of the entire non-desk MPA population for non-desk uh, population, I can't tell for sure. I can tell for the whole company, it's uh, around 93%, I think. Uh, I, I know that uh, 
overall it's 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 somewhere around 90 percent uh so actually almost everyone is on sherlock in the company we have a very very small proportion of people who haven't registered yet but these are normally people who are on the long-term leave or uh, they left the company and we forgot to remove them uh, from 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 the platform but normally almost everyone is on the platform all right this sounds amazing so you did a great job you're doing a great job with the platform um your employees as they're posting and as they're posting such precious pieces of content. Um, this is an amazing culture that you created and that you keep nurturing. So well done. Thank you for sharing so much. I know that there are a lot of questions that we aren't able to answer now, but we have them all stored in this webinar. You will get a reply via email to all open questions. So thank you for joining. For those of you um, who are listening to this webinar because you're probably affected also by this sunset um, of, of Meta Workplace, um, we will post a link into the, the chat box if you want to get in touch with us. Um, if you want to see how we position ourselves in this kind of situation for companies who are affected by the sunset and who are looking for an alternative. Now, there was a webinar a couple of weeks ago. There will be a link to in the chat if you want to look into that one. Um, but up until now, um, we're on time, exactly on the hour. So thank you so much, Karina, for sharing uh, all those details with us. Uh, thank you for all the attendees. Um, coming into this webinar, listening to us, and hopefully it was interesting for all of you. And we wish you a good rest of your day. Hopefully it's not as hot as here. So I will now go to somewhere cooler. I don't know where, but I will find something. Thanks all for joining. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.